The War Within pre-patch is here. If only it was the full thing, eh? Well, don't worry. When the full expansion does launch, I will have a full, in-depth, beginner-friendly guide for Retribution Paladin for you. But today, however, I wanted to do a quick update on all of the pre-patch changes and how you are now going to be playing Retribution Paladin in this pre-patch kind of transitionary period between Dragonflight and also the War Within. So one of the main changes that has actually happened to Retribution Paladin is all of our holy power spenders now cost free holy power. What does this mean? Well, before they cost different amounts, and now it's just free across the board for every spender ability, meaning that, in my opinion, the build has been standardised and made more straightforward and simpler. There's less to calculate and theory craft and think about when everything costs the same. It makes it very easy to decide when we're going to use what. Another really interesting talent is around our Avenging Wrath here. So, usually, you can use your uh, Avenging Wrath, calling upon the light and becoming an avatar of retribution, increasing your damage healing uh, done, and allowing Hammer of Wrath to be cast on any target. Combines with any other Avenging Wrath abilities, granting all known Avenging Wrath effects while active. So, Hammer of Wrath, that is what that cooldown lets you use. Hammer of Wrath usually is only available when your enemy has less than 20% health. And... Avenging Wrath means that basically you can use it whenever. So, we've got a brand new talent that is really interesting. It used to be on two minutes, a one minute cooldown. But, we now have over here in Retribution this talent, Radiant Glory. Avenging Wrath is replaced with Radiant Glory. And this is actually a passive effect. Wake of Ashes activates Avenging Wrath for eight seconds. Each holy power spent has a chance to activate Avenging Wrath for four seconds. So whenever we actually use our holy power, we activate it for a few seconds. We have a chance to. And whenever we use our Wake of Ashes, it's also going to be activated. Meaning that cooldown is going to be kind of cycling through our rotation passively as we play. I don't know if I re prefer it or not. It's definitely an interesting change. and I definitely don't dislike it. Um, I think it's going to give it, a, well, it's obviously going to give it a lot more uptime. Um, and I think it should play better. But, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. So, we're starting off with the raid rotation. I actually am not changing my talent tree whatsoever. So, if you've watched my season 4 guide, stick with the same talent tree uh, that you had and I advised in there. And you can watch that on my channel if you wish. It's still absolutely fine. The rotation itself isn't changing massively in this pre-patch period. I would still say in raid for single target to be using execution sentence. Oh, I'm... Am I wearing a... Oh, I am I think I must have been wearing... I'm wearing my protection gear, so I've got a sword and shield, a mason shield. Um, imagine I'm using a two-handed, okay? Because um, people do pick up on these, these details. I think I was wearing like a jewel wield or a two-hander in a death knight video and everyone was like oh i'm only wearing that and i was like oh no it's just because i was filming like f every spec in um in order um so yeah you're obviously not gonna be wearing a sword and shield just fyi so final verdict after that again it's going to cost free holy power to use unleashing a powerful weapon strike that deals holy strike damage to an enemy target and has a 15 percent chance to reset the cooldown on a hammer of wrath and make it usable on any target uh, regardless of health, and that is your Hammer of Wrath here. After that, we're going to use Wake of Ashes, and oh, look, we can use our Hammer of Wrath. The reason being here is that we have actually got Avenging Wrath um, coming up. I do think I really like it, you know, the more I think about it, because using Hammer of Wrath more, whereas before it was like, we can only use it at really certain periods, it's actually going to be in a lot more now. Um, it is going to be really interesting, actually. So, we're going to use Wake of Ashes, lashing out our enemies, dealing damage to all enemies within 14 yards and applying Truth's Wake, burning them over 9 seconds. We want to try and keep up this... <clears throat> Sorry, my apologies. We want to try and keep up this debuff really on them at all times if we can, keeping that up as much as possible. After that, we're going to be using... Oh, and by the way, it does generate free Holy Power. 
We're going to use our Blade of Justice after that. Again, generating one holy power. Pr uh, piercing an enemy with a Blade of Light, dealing X amount of damage. Then we're going to use Divine Toll. Instantly cast Judgment on up to five enemies within 30 yards. This is Judgment here. After casting Divine Toll, you instantly get Judgment every... Or cast it every five seconds for 15 seconds. So three times. And the Divine Toll's Judgment will deal double damage than your usual Judgment will. After that, if we can, we will use a uh, Hammer of Wrath. Again, generating one Holy Power. And then after that, <coughs> we're going to use uh, Judgment as our lowest priority. So again... <laughs> using Execution Sentence, then using Final Verdict, which will cost um, free Holy Power. So Final Verdict is the main way that we're actually going to be spending our Holy Power. Again, every Holy Power spender is now costing free. After that, it's the Wake of Ashes, generating free Holy Power. So imagine you have free Holy Power and you use Final Verdict. You then use Wake of Ashes, and then you go back and spend Final Verdict. So that's like a priority list. You keep going back up until you can use something. After that, Blade of Justice, Divine Toll, Hammer of Wrath if you can, and then Judgment. And that really is going to be the single target rotation. It used to be a bit more complex, where different things had different amounts of holy power. And we would be like, cast this if you have this much holy power. Cast this if you have this much holy power. But now where everything just costs free, the rotation is actually a bit more um, simplistic, in my opinion, for the pre-patch. Now, I do want to show you what we're doing if we go into Raid. Sorry, Mythic Plus and AoE. We're really not changing much. We are changing a few talents over, as you can see here. Um, but all we're really changing in the rotation is that we're using Divine Storm here as our Holy Power Spender. Um, Final Verdict and then Divine Storm. Divine Storm unleashes a world of Divine Energy, dealing Radiant Damage to all nearby enemies. Um, deals reduce damage beyond five targets. We're just slotting that into the rotation there. Um, and don't worry about these. Um, yeah, we're just slotting that into the rotation pretty early on. And that is pretty much it. That is the only change we're actually going to make for the Mythic Plus AoE rotation. And that is really it. Even though it seems like there's a lot of big changes for Retribution Paladin in the pre-patch, I wouldn't worry about them too much. They're not really having a, a sizable effect on the rotation we're doing. And where they are, it's just making it more simple and easier to follow and think about what buttons we should be pressing and when. If you are looking for other videos, like Holy Paladin has had a huge change. Click this link here. I'm doing quite a lot, or hopefully all, um, pre-patch guides for classes. And I will be doing full in-depth guides as soon as the war within launches beginner friendly and in-depth going over stat priorities cooldowns utilities rotation everything you need to know consumables you know literally everything the second that the war within drops i will have you covered for all specializations in wow i literally play all of them i spend my more time theory crafting than i do playing wow legitimately um but that's what i enjoy so it's fine if you would like to also support the channel feel free to join my patreon there's a link in the below and i can give you any one-on-one -on -one support you need through there as well as getting my uh, ui etc obviously not including these huge bars these are just for the video um but the rest of it yes you can get on there and i will be doing pvp guides as well in the war within so if you do want those make sure to subscribe